Hey everyone! So, to further introduce myself to you, I thought that this week we would do a bookshelf tour. So this right here is basically my reading corner or nook that I made for myself. I've got these two bookshelves and my Papasan chair. So we'll start with this smaller bookshelf. On the first shelf, we have just an assortment of mostly contemporary books. Some of them are YA, some of them are not. This is kind of the overflow shelf from these bookshelves. So we've got some books such as The Notebook and Phantom of the Opera, Alice in Wonderland, um, The Girl Who Played with Fire, which is the second book in the series. I've read the first two and am currently reading the third one. The first one I am lending out to a friend right now. And then we have Wildwood, which you saw in my favorites video. One thing I should add about this book is that it will be a series. And the second book is coming out, I think, in September, and it's called Under Wildwood. You can read the first three chapters of it online and see the cover, so I will put a link to that in the description. And I really recommend you check it out because it's really, really good. And then we have Big Fish over here, which is a really good movie, um, The Host and the Book Thief, which I both really enjoyed. So down here on the middle shelf, we have mostly my artistic related novels, Girl with a Pearl Earring, The Art Thief, some Dan Brown books, Susan Vreeland. Um, Susan Vreeland writes about lives of the artists such as Vermeer or Artemisia or Emily Carr if you know who that is and then these are just some kind of old artistic textbook type books um, I haven't really read them too much but I think they're at a yard sale and so I picked them up and then we have The Victorians by Jeremy Paxman which is basically about how the art world was affected by the Victorian age in mostly England. Down on the bottom shelf I have a wide variety of stuff. Some really old children's books. The Indian in the Cupboard books which I really loved as a kid. An Eric Carle book and I really love him and his artistic style. And Calvin and Hobbes, Wayside School Gets a Little Stranger. These are books about different parts of the world and travel books and uh, European history. Definitely gotta have a magic eye book. Dictionaries, Spanish dictionary, English, and then a bunch of cookbooks, some crossword puzzles, some coloring books. It's some old notebooks from college. This is the book I used to learn how to play the guitar. So that finishes up this bookshelf. Let's move over to the big one. So we'll start at the bottom. This bottom shelf I have many many art books and I arranged it somewhat chronologically so I have Leonardo da Vinci, Albrecht Durer, then kind of turn of the century artists like Klimt and Monet, Sargent, Celia Bow, and then we go more into the modern era, so Georgia O'Keeffe, uh, postmodernism, Tommy de Paula. I'm a huge fan of portraits and I love drawing and painting them myself, so I have quite a lot of portrait books. This book is one that I bought in Spain while I was in Madrid visiting the Reina Sofia Museum and this book is one that I bought when I visited the Louvre in Paris. So back down on this side we have a Guerrilla Girls book which if you are interested in art history and female art is definitely something that you should check out. We have the Harry Potter page to screen which is all about the art and planning of the movies. And then just some various other books that I got throughout my college time. This bookshelf also doubles as a 
media shelf. So I have all of my DVD movies and then up here I have all of my TV series. On the very end we have the few CDs that I actually collect um, and I keep these ones because they are just really pretty. So I have a couple Iron and Wine CDs and then Fleet Foxes Helplessness Blues and then Mumford and Sons Sign No More. So these books right here which you saw um, are kind of my currently reading pile. Um, Game of Thrones I am about 150 pages in and I really like it so far. The Gift by Lewis Hyde is basically just about creativity and artist in the modern world and so far it's actually kind of boring and mostly just about a theory of gift exchange but I've heard that the second half is more interesting and then Kurt Vonnegut Slaughterhouse 5 I haven't actually started yet but I'm really looking forward to it so up on the next shelf over here we have my very large oversize art books Gustav Klimt and Georgia O'Keeffe and then the art books transition into this book, Heart to Heart, which is poems inspired by 20th century American art, which transitions into my poetry collection. I took a poetry seminar in my third year of college, and instead of buying textbooks, we just had to go out and buy poems. So I bought some, some Tennyson, Emily Dickinson, Whitman, Frost, Emily Bronte, and then these Emily Bronte poems transition into Emily Bronte's novel. So we have a couple different copies of Wuthering Heights. This bigger one I bought because it has additional information and analysis in the back, while this one is just purely the text of the novel. Then that transitions into Charlotte Bronte's Jane Eyre. And then we just have a selection of other books that I kind of consider to be classics. And this whole end is all of my Jane Austen books. So Pride and Prejudice, and then my collection of her seven novels, which was also in my favorites video. Lady Susan, The Watsons, and Sanditon, which are mostly short stories or unfinished novels. The Juvenilia of Jane Austen and Charlotte Bronte, so basically all of the stuff that they wrote when they were children. Then we have Two Histories of England by Jane Austen and Charles Dickens, um, a quote book from Jane Austen, and then we have Lost in Austen by Emma Campbell Webster, and it's basically like a create your own adventure book but with Jane Austen, so it's pretty cool. And then up on the top here, we have most of my YA books. So first and most important is of course Harry Potter, which I absolutely love. I have all of the seven novels in paperback, as well as Tales of Beetle the Bard, Quidditch Through the Ages, and Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Film Wizardry, which is a different book about some of the design elements of the seven movies. I have the Special Empire magazine of Harry Potter, the Harry Potter the Exhibition, which I actually ordered online after visiting the actual exhibition. The bag that I bought some stuff in at the gift shop at the exhibition. Here we have just a catalog from the Noble collection. And then some of the objects I have here, as you can see, Hermione's Time Turner and a little snitch. This cost me only nine dollars. The one at the exhibition was like ninety dollars and you couldn't even take the snitch off of its little metal stand so I like this one a lot better. And then I bought a chocolate frog at the exhibition and I got kind of hard to see but Pomona Sprout. And as you can see here I have Hermione's wand which is the official one. I really love Hermione. I'd say she's my favorite character, so having her wand means a lot to me, I guess. It's just really pretty. 
so then behind the wand, we have some other YA books. So we have Maureen Johnson, Let It Snow, which she co-wrote with John Green and Lauren Miracle. So then that transfers into John Green's books. Uh, the only one I don't have is Looking for Alaska. I have read it and it was the first one I read, but it was a library book. And then here in the middle, we just kind of have some other random young adult book. I have read the whole Narnia series, but this is the only one I actually own. And then on the end, as you will notice, on the complete opposite side from Harry Potter so that they don't get into a fight, is the Twilight series. I did enjoy reading the books and I do enjoy watching the movies. I wouldn't consider myself the hugest Twilight fan and I would definitely choose Harry Potter over Twilight any day. I also have the Short Second Life of Brie Tanner, The Official Illustrated Guide, and Catherine Hardwick's Twilight Director's Notebook. And then my Rubik's Cube, which yes, I do know how to solve. I learned from this man right here, Mr. Dan Brown. And this is actually a picture of him holding a drawing that I made of him and sent in to him and then he featured in a video so I just printed out the screenshot and <laughs> put it in a frame and then these shelves obviously aren't bookshelves but they're just also in my shelves corner so I just have a bunch of random stuff um, some highlights I have this deer skull that I found one day when I was geocaching and then I also have this deer antler which had freshly fallen off in the spring. These are a box of my most favorite truffles. Uh, it's empty of course but I really like the design and it's just there to remind me that those exist. And then up here I have this little purple children's guitar which I don't ever play because the tuning heads are plastic and really crappy so it doesn't ever stay in tune even for just one second. And then I just have some pictures and some flowers. And this bunny actually came from Paige Harwood, which you might know as Hope on a 10 Speed. She was selling a bunch of her old stuff. And basically you just paid her $5 and she would send you some random thing from her room. So this is what I got. So those are my bookshelves. If I get a lot of new books at some point, maybe I'll do an update. I hope you enjoyed it. If you saw anything on my bookshelves that I didn't talk about and you want me to explain, I'd be happy to. So just leave a comment and I will see you next time.